Hello and welcome to the channel. My name is Josh and you're watching Our History. Today we're going over the life of Mzilikaze Mosele Katse Kumalo, who was a prominent Southern African king who established the Ndebele Kingdom, known today as Matebeleland, and situated in present-day Zimbabwe. So if you enjoy this, please be sure to like, and if you're new here, consider smashing the subscribe button. If this isn't your first rodeo, and you haven't shown some love to the subscribe, now is your opportunity. Thank you for watching. Mzilikazi Mzilikazi Mosele Katse Kumalo, born around 1790, was a prominent Southern African king who established the Ndebele Kingdom known today as Matabeleland and situated in present-day Zimbabwe. Translated, his name means the Great River of Blood. He was born in Nkuze, Zululand, which is now part of KwaZulu-Natal, South Africa, and passed away in Ingama, Matabeleland, near Bulawayo, Zimbabwe. Mzilikazi is widely regarded as one of the most influential military leaders in Southern Africa, second only to the renowned Zulu king Shaka. In his personal account, Explorer David Livingston expressed admiration for Mzilikazi as the second most remarkable leader he encountered on the African continent, leaving Zululand. Mzilikazi, a former lieutenant of Shaka, departed Zululand during the Mfrikane period, taking with him a substantial number of Shaka's cattle. While it remains unclear whether Mzilikazi stole these cattle or acquired them through raids on neighboring tribes, Shaka initially recognized Mzilikazi's contributions and rewarded him with cattle and soldiers. However, tensions arose over time, and in 1826, Mzilikazi shifted his base from Mozambique to the Transvaal region due to ongoing attacks from his adversaries. Through conquest, Mzilikazi absorbed numerous individuals from different tribes, notably culminating in his assault on Dunza Kral in Esi Kujini. In his attack, Nzunza King Magodongo and several others were kidnapped and later killed near the Mkobola River. For a period of 10 years, from approximately 1821 to 1831, Mzilikazi exerted significant control over the Transvaal region through a combination of eliminating opposition and restructuring the conquered territory to align with the Matabele order. Mzilikazi solidified his dominance. In 1831, after a victorious battle against the Khikwa people, he extended his control further by occupying their lands near the Khapsa mountains to maintain a secure perimeter and distance from neighboring kingdoms, Mzilikazi resorted to scorched earth tactics. This destructive strategy resulted in a significant loss of life and the depopulation of the region. It is estimated that the death toll was substantially enough to allow the fur trackers to effortlessly establish their ownership of the Highveld area in the 1830s without any resistance. Fighting with the Boer in 1836, the foot trackers began arriving in the Transvaal, leading to a series of confrontations with the Matabele over the next two years. These confrontations resulted in heavy losses for the Matabele. As a result, by early 1838, Mzilikazi and his people were forced to move northwards, crossing the Limbopo River and leaving the Transvaal altogether. To better strategize their military efforts, Mzilikazi decided to split his group in two. One part remained under his command, while the other, led by military leader Gundwane Ndiweni, moved northward across the Limpopo independently from Mzilikazi. This division allowed the Ndebele to maintain their presence in the region despite the setbacks they faced. Mzilikazi, following a series of attacks, was compelled to relocate once again. Initially, he moved westward into to the region that is presently Botswana. However, he encountered difficulties in settling there due to the high presence of tsetse flies. These flies, known to carry the disease fatal to oxen, posed a serious threat to Mzilikazi's livestock. Consequently, he embarked on another journey, this time heading northwards towards what is now Zambia. However, the presence of tsetse flies continued to impede his settlement efforts. Ultimately, Mzilikazi altered his course and headed southeastwards, eventually establishing himself in an area known as Matabeleland, located located in the southwestern part of modern-day Zimbabwe. It was in this region that Mzilikazi reunited with a faction led by Gundwane Ndiweni in the year 1840. After arriving in the area, Mzilikazi established a hierarchical system within his group, resembling the regimental crawls implemented by Shaka. This new organization aimed to strengthen the Matabele community. Under his guidance, the Matabele peaceful successfully defended against the series of Buret assaults from 
1847 to 1851. Furthermore, Mzilikazi's strategic prowess and growing influence compelled the South African Republic government to engage in diplomacy. Consequently, in 1852, a peace treaty was signed between the two parties, securing a more stable environment for the Matabele aspirations. Matabili Kingdom. Mzilikazi displayed a mostly friendly attitude towards European travelers during his reign. However, he remained wary of the potential threats they posed to his kingdom. As a result, he selectively denied some visitors entry into his realm as a precautionary measure. Among the notable Europeans who had the opportunity to meet Mzilikazi were Henry Hartley, a renowned hunter and explorer, Robert Moffat and John Mackenzie, both missionaries, David Hume, an explorer and trader, Andrew Smith, a medical doctor, ethnologist and zoologist, William Cornwallis Harris, a hunter, and the pioneering missionary explorer, David Livingston. Mzilikazi faced defeat against the Furtaka Boers during the Great Trek in Transvaal. Following this defeat, he became separated from his tribe during their migration north of the Limpopo River. Believing him to be dead, the tribe declared his young heir, Nkulumane, as his successor. However, Mzilikazi eventually resurfaced after a challenging journey through the Zambezi Valley and took back control. It is said that he ordered the execution of his son and the chiefs who had chosen him, with the popular belief being that they were thrown off the steep cliffs of Ntabazinduna, now known as the Hill of Chiefs. According to another account, it is claimed that Nkulumane, instead of being killed with the chiefs, was sent back to the Zulu kingdom along with a substantial delegation that included warriors. On his journey back south, Nkulumani is said to have passed through the Bakwena territory in the northwestern Transvaal, close to Rustenburg. During this time, the Bakwena were facing difficulties defending themselves against repeated attacks from a neighboring king who sought to claim their territory. Nkulumani purportedly aided the Bakwena by leading his impi or warriors in a battle during which he himself killed the opposing chief. After the Bakwena tribe emerged victorious in battle, they convinced Nkulumane to settle in their territory. They argued that it would be dangerous for him to return to the Zulu kingdom due to potential threats of his father's enemies. Nkulumane agreed and lived with his family in this area until his death in 1883. Today his grave can be found on the outskirts of Rustenburg of Pokeng, covered by a concrete slab. Interestingly, the site of Nkulumane's grave is often referred to as Mzilikazi's corpse, despite the fact that his Nkulumane who is actually buried there. After reclaiming his position as king, Mzilikazi chose Ntabazinduna mountain as the location for his newly found nation. Initially his capital was established in Inyati, where he unexpectedly reconnected with his old acquaintance Robert Moffat, whom he had met in the Transvaal Republic during his journey from Kuruman. It was during this time that Mzilikazi's son Nkulumane was born. However, Inyati was abandoned in 1859 following the death of his senior wife Queen Lozibo. Mzilikazi then established his next capital at Mshatlandlela in Motopo district, where he was eventually laid to rest. This served as his final capital until his passing at Mkameni near Gwanda on the September the 5th, 1868. In 1970, the city of Bulawayo in Zimbabwe established the Mzilikazi Memorial Library as its main library. To commemorate his centenary, a bust of King Mzilikazi, the founder of the Ndebele Kingdom, was placed at the entrance of the library. If you made it this far, I hope you're really enjoying this channel. And if you'd like to support the creation of more content like this, because all contributions are greatly appreciated, consider joining the channel in the membership tab or check out the Patreon link in the description below.